Um, I'm happy to welcome uh, seven guests plus our CEO of Ibasa, Joseph Chiwila Willow, in the room. Um, today, we are looking at those tools and approaches that business advisors find uh, very useful for themselves. It's a very much an introduction because we've got, uh, we're going to look at seven different tools. It will be a quick introduction to those tools, but um, uh, it gives you the opportunity to get an overview and also to um, then follow the links and the contacts that you may make uh, on this webinar if something is of interest for you. By the way, by the end of the webinar, we'll give you a link that will allow you to download the presentation that we have here today, as well as all the contact details and uh, web addresses of the different tools we're going to cover. So lots to look forward. It's the first time we do a 90-minute webinar. It's because we have quite a few people in the room here today. Um, so let me welcome them to start off with, uh, and I'll show you the pictures again, um, because we get to know some people better by their faces. We've got Luther Dedrichs, who will be talking about the SA Excellence model, uh, Sophie Sondwandwe uh, from Catalyst for Growth, Emil Fouri, by the way, Emil is the only entrepreneur that's running his own business, is that true? Others are all business advisors, I think, or in that space. Uh, talking about the flow canvas that he uses in his business. Uh, Ty Ronell from Due Diligence, Hilton Tennyson from Growth Wheel, Carl Fenter that will be explaining how to use the balance scorecard and Roger Arantse on Theory U. So you can already see it's quite a range of different kinds of tools. We're not focusing on anything specific. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, these are the seven people that we have in the room today to share their ideas and experiences. But uh, before we get to that, um, if you may, if you may type in, if you haven't done so yet, I see there's a lot of hellos going on in the in the chat. The chat is there for chat, so please feel free to chat there. Uh, welcome, Bruce, Colin, Karina, Daryl. Some names that we see Dev, I Dev, uh, appearing here quite often. So I think we're also starting to build a community of people, including those that are leaders in the Barca, like Lawrence. Uh, new, hi guys, Philip, Rob, uh, Siba King, um, and many more. So as we speak, the number of attendees is increasing, which is nice to see. Um, if we may ask that you use the chat to uh, share with us, perhaps you can do so now to introduce yourself, just say where you are from. And if I may ask that in that chat, you type what kind of tools you are using or are aware of right now that helps business advisors in improving the impact they have with the clients. So use that chat area. By the way, if you haven't found it yet on the left top of your screen, you'll see it says audio settings, QA, chat, and raise hand. So there's where you click to open the chat and you can participate in the chat. When you pose a question, anytime during the webinar, in fact, you can pose a question, uh, please use the QA button for that because it highlights it for us to know that we must address it as a question. If you type a question in the tab, we may miss that. Okay, so that's kind of like all the housekeeping done. Um, if uh, I may call on our uh, trusted CEO of Ibasa, uh, Mr. Tewila Willow, to unmute and to switch on his camera, um, it would be great, uh, Joseph, if you can tell us what the news is from Ibasa's side and what there is to be looking forward to. Uh, Chris, thank you so much. Uh, I'm not going to give too much, but I will try to invite people to come to our next conference, which I'll give them what is the conference all about. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity again, Christopher and your team. Um, EPI is our partner in uh, rendering, giving this uh, free webinar. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, welcome everybody who is going to be participating, especially our guest presenters will be presenting to our members and non-members. And I would like to take this opportunity to consider joining IBASA. Uh, IBASA is redefining the space of business advising, and we believe, uh, as you can see today, us bringing more than uh, six uh, 
organizations with various tools. Um, I'm pleased to also inform uh, those who are in attendance today that as IBASA, we are working with SEED, uh, the um, Bureau of Standards, the African Bureau of Standards, CEDA, and um, Department of Small Business. We are working on, cre uh, on the creation of standards for business advisors. And uh, this is going to, we will be looking at a policy at the conference that is going to be taking place uh, on the, from the 21st of this month to the 23rd. And our members already, we are pleased to inform you that over and above the price that you have to pay, there's an additional 800 discount that um, we, because we would like you to obtain those CPD points, IBASA is actually going to pay for you. So we would like to encourage you to enroll for this conference that will be looking at the policy uh, that is going to be regulating business advisors. And as we all know that uh, IBASA is an independent non-statutory professional body recognized by SACWA. We are not a regulatory body, but currently we are working as a regulator regulating our members. And um, it is therefore uh, important for us to encourage organizations that are listening here today, banks and various partners and uh, um, um, associate in the business advising space to make sure that you use people who have been graded and accredited by IBASA using a rigorous kind of system that uh, gives them a qualification. And there is, that, uh, there is a changes that we are looking at in terms of our national qualification framework where we are aligning our designation with, our, with the uh, national qualification uh, frame, framework, NQF levels. And uh, I will not elaborate on this as this is something that the board is uh, working on and we are busy finalizing it and only when uh, day after tomorrow, I mean, in three days, the board will be giving me the go ahead. But members, you will get to know exactly how we are professionalizing this industry and how we believe that it needs to be recognized as a profession and that we need to start teaching our children about uh, financial management, finances, entrepreneurship from primary school, not at university as some of us were only exposed to these things at um, high school towards the end actually, or even at university. So uh, these are exciting times people and this forum, let, let's keep on going and EPI, thank you again for giving us this opportunity. If you're not going to stop me, I can continue. I've got so much to say about okay. IBASA, how good yeah. we are still in terms of membership. Join us and let us transform and change this organization, I mean, this um, industry in the country by making it a, a profession. Um, I, I am pleased to have the kind of people um, that we work with. I saw my friend Hilton there is presenting. I saw uh, Mr. Nduandre Sifiso, and I saw um, Mr. Diderix there, and many other of our colleagues who are here. And I believe um, through you, uh, EPI, uh, I really need to sit around the table with the kind of people that you have today, and many others who are out there who believe that they've got tools. And I, I, I believe you mentioned that Div is one of the people who's participating here this morning. And he's, he's got, and um, so these are the people that we need to get together and make sure that we transform. Transformation is not about changing this thing, making it black. It's giving our members their correct tool. As you'll be getting today, amongst all these tools, we need to come up with a tool that can be a universal tool for this industry that will be used by everybody and including international organization in the industry, you know? So um, we are excited at IBASA and I believe, I'm sure if my chairman is not joined here, he's going to be joining and um, if he's not going to be joining, but I do send his regards to all the membership who are here. And if he's here, he will be talking to you. And these are indeed exciting time for IBASA 
and its members only if we can work together and make sure that we encourage the industry. And I'm pleased, by the way, let me also take this opportunity to say that we are supported as IBASA in terms of all the initiatives and the things that we are doing to transform this economy. We are supported by the Department of Small Business. We are supported by Services CETA. We are supported by SEED, a SEED and CEDA, and many other organizations. And we believe it is for the reason that we are doing the right things, that we are being supported. It's not because of any other thing. And we therefore encourage those who are not members because we really want to grow our numbers with people of quality and integrity. Uh, let me repeat this one. We want trustworthy business advisors out there, people of integrity, people who are honest, people who will fear Allah, God, not fear an individual. And not uh, only when uh, Christopher is not watching, I do bad things. And when he's watching, I pretend to be a good person. So we want people who fear God or whoever that person you call that is the creator of earth and heaven. So people of integrity to be our members, to stay uh, very important in the industry so that we can build this wonderful country. And please, members, don't get involved with this corruption that we are seeing in the country that is going to destroy this country. Don't be part of that. And if we found that, if we find out that you are one of the people who are corrupting this country and the people here, you will definitely be subject to the disciplinary process of Ibaza. And I believe you will be fined and be expelled and you won't enjoy that money because we will uh, blacklist you everywhere. You will never be able to do business in this country. We encourage integrity. We encourage people who are not going to steal from our poor people who are trying to start businesses. We want people who love this country with all their hearts. We've got all of us black and white. We've got nowhere to go. We are here, Indians, colored, Africans, black people, the vendors, the Botswana, the Tosas. We are all here and uh, the, 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 everyone in South Africa. We want this country to work. And we believe those who are going to be voting uh, in, in December now at the ANC conference, you do the right thing. We don't know who's going to be the right person, but you know. And if you are going to vote for corruption and try and destroy this country, we'll probably destroy you before you destroy the country because we love you much better than you. Yeah, so um, that's, indeed why, that's indeed why we are do the right webinars thing. because we, we, love, are we love this country. We want to help our businesses. We want to help the industry. The economy is gradually coming. And I agree with radical economic transformation, but it's got to be done systematically and it's got to, done, to be done with everyone, all of us knowing exactly we need to be transparent. It's not something when you are about to end your term as a governor, you come with transformation and that you didn't do for the past 2011 years. We don't want that. And it's got to be systematic and let us be orderly as a country and do things that will build this wonderful country that we all love so much. And evil must stop. Evil must stop. Business advisors, we want integrity, honesty, trustworthy. Thank you so much, Chris. I know you want to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, I know that if we let you speak, you'll speak the whole 90 minutes. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you it. You reminded us of, of some very important um, elements of what IBASA is about, you know, sort of as a professional body. So I see there that um, in the poll that we're running that we 57% of the people on the webinar at the moment are members of IBASA, which means that there are 43% that are not. And I would really call on those that are um, not members. So by the way, if you haven't voted, quickly vote there to show us who are members and who are not. Um, but yeah, our CEO raises some very important um, points there in terms of what our job is as business advisors and the contribution we make to a country uh, with uh, significant economic problems. And you know, if we get better at supporting our businesses, our clients that are businesses, they're gonna contribute better to the economy of the country. And that way, it's quite an important task, in fact, that we have. And of course, as professional body also to look after the ethical side of things. So I'm gonna end, end that poll now with 60% of the people on the call, 61% of the people on the call today, on the webinar today, uh, being members. So, uh, by the way, if you're not a member, 
um, it's not so difficult to become one. Um, and we can share a quick uh, web link for you uh, so that you can see uh, where to go to ibasa member dot the hyphen epr dot org is a link towards a form if you fill that out uh, the staff in the ibasa office will be in contact with you um, quite quickly to uh, make sure that uh, you can become a member um, and of course the conference um, there's a special on the conference that they'll be able to tell you about if you buy a ticket to the conference you can in fact get a good discount from the conference but also from future uh, ibasa membership fees so um, but go to that um, link there, ibasa member dot the hyphen epr dot org, and uh, they will be in contact with you. So that is most of our uh, introductions done. Um, we are just short of seventy people on the call today on the webinar today, so a nice number. Uh, I've not been able to follow the chat much but I've been listening very carefully to what our CEO was saying. So, um, but um, please make use of that too. You can, I've seen, in fact, I've, I've, after the last webinar that we had heard about people that connected through the chat and uh, are looking at doing some projects together. So that's kind of part of the purpose that we have here is we can even network through the chat area and make new connections with people that are working in the same areas as us. Um, but let's, let's move forward with the webinar. Our topic here today is indeed what the tools are, these tools that some people rave about, and we want to give ample opportunity for those seven uh, people that are spending the time with us today here to talk about the tools um, that they have and offer or that they use. So by the way, they, there's different capacities here that people are involved with. Some are from the organizations that, are, that own and, and manage the tools. Some are users of the tools and some are business advisors that are, um, oops, here's something happening that we didn't anticipate. Um, I think it's Hilton. Uh, uh, Hilton, I think you're sharing something there that, so just be cautious. Um, our guests are sabotaging our webinar. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's called uh, subliminal influence, I think. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, we'll allocate about five minutes to each to present um, what they have. But before we, we go on to the tools itself, um, let's, um, let's ask another question um, in the poll area. Um, two questions. Uh, how many different tools are you aware of or methods, approaches to supporting entrepreneurs are you aware of roughly? You know, sort of it's not a scientific uh, perhaps answer, but if you can uh, have a guess. And how many are you using on an ongoing basis at the moment? If you can, can vote there. I see no one is voting, so uh, some votes coming in. Some indications of uh, most are using five or more, or no five or more. So it looks like our audience is quite familiar with uh, tools. Um, if you voted, uh, would you also share with us what the tools are that you know of in the chat area? You can see what kind of familiarity people have with different tools. Can we, uh, oh, obviously we've warned you of some today here in the webinar already, but are there any others that you, that you can think of? I mean, uh, most, most say, in fact, 40% of us know five or more tools, you know, sort of. So um, there are a good 19% uh, that say they don't know of any tools and they would, of course, not use any tools too. And then most of us, it's a spread, you know, sort of most of us use about uh, 20, a quarter of us don't use any tools. A quarter of us use two tools and then about 20% five or more tools. So there's... Um, Growth Wheel, Catalyst for Growth, SME Snapshot that people know about, Arbianca, um, some other tools that people know about, some things about value chain, Shirley. Any other tools that you know about? Just type there in the chat that we get the sense of where you're at before we jump into the discussion. 
time is ticking on too. So we actually need to get going. So I'm going to end the poll now, but thank you for participating there. And um, it looks like there's a fair familiarity, even though we're not kind of typing lots of uh, tools we know about in the chat area. Um, so uh, we've got a sequence uh, of um, presentation by the participants here today. And we're st starting off with Safiso talking about Catalyst for Growth. We're going to try to stick to uh, about five minutes per person. And so Safiso, if you can uh, show your camera and your video, uh, we'll be able to see you and hear you. Uh, Safiso, are you there? Just click the microphone and the camera to unmute. There you are. Yeah, I heard something. Can you hear yes. me now? Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you fine now. So I've got your um, slide shared, um, Safiso. So if you uh, want to talk us through and just give me a cue when you want to move on. That's a fiesel. Okay, let's see. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, we hear you now. Okay, thank you. I was saying thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's difficult to talk after that uh, load of passion from the Ibasa CEO. Um, um, but yeah, thank you. I will just share with you um, the platform or the tool that Cutters for Growth has been working on over the last two years. And, uh, and, and, and as a contribution, I think, to the work that is being done by many players in the ecosystem. Um, and I won't bore you with the history and, and, and uh, I will just ask you to go to our website and read up on the genesis of Cutters for Growth, where it started as a pilot and, uh, in 2012 and, in, and, and, and then we ran a beta between 2015 and 2016. And we have now at a point in 2017, we have developed this platform, which is this tool that uh, I'm going to just briefly uh, give you an overview of next, the next one. Next slide. Um, and, and this gives you sort of a picture of the number of partners uh, that are working with us. Um, 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 these are mostly the, the, the business development service providers uh, and, and corporates that have come on board to work with us on this platform because they find value in the, in, in the tool that we're using. And obviously the number is growing every day. Let's go to the next one. Um, this basically is a representation of um, a summary of, of the tool, uh, the constituent parts of the tool. The context is that uh, the tool sits in the ecosystem and seeks to make value, to add value to the work that is being done by very, very, various players in the ecosystem. And, and, uh, and, and our partnerships are, are mainly with the business development service providers, which are the layer of institutions and organizations that are working directly with SMEs. Uh, for example, IBASA members who are consulting and working and advising and, and, and working in, in, in interactively with SMEs. Um, and we work also with funders who are funding SMEs and also the platform uh, also anticipates working with, with buyers of BDS, BDS providers, which are actually corporates who are paying for the services that are being delivered to, to various SMEs. You'll see that Cutters for Growth, uh, if you look at the top of the screen, we our focus is basically on monitoring valuation, which is collection of data uh, that uh, is, uh, shows uh, the, 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 the performance of SMEs. Um, um, and, and so we collect data largely through BDS providers who are working directly with them on the performance of SMEs. And when we receive this data, um, we, we then analyze this data and we're able to uh, use uh, the, the, the various data we're getting from various service providers and assisting them to, 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 to actually compare the results of the performance of the SMEs, various other other, other other data sets that we have in the system. So at the center is Cutters for Growth, which maintains a database of various providers and SMEs with whom they work. And you see to the left, we then publish non attributable uh, anonymized descriptive performance data on SMEs so that our partners, um, when, we, when we publish this, uh, it will not be publishing specific data for specific um, uh, service providers. Uh, so it, it's anonymized when we actually publish uh, for public viewing 
which shows the trends of what's happening uh, in, in, the, the, in the data and what's happening in the eco ecosystem. Um, and, and again, the, this data becomes important for, 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 for BDS providers, uh, BDS, uh, for funders of BDS, because they use this data to make decisions on what programs to fund, what partners to work with, which is BDS providers, uh, because it shows where there is relatively better impact in which sector and which partners seem to have familiarity and niche themselves in particular sectors. So various buyers of BDS uh, were, were, are using this, this data to make decisions about where to invest uh, in terms of supporting small businesses. And, uh, and, and BDS providers obviously use this data. And the next slide, as you can see, is how this data then over time uh, begins to show the performance of SMEs and our partners who log into the system, input the data, and, 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 and the system is able to then do analytics of that data and is able to show the performance of the SMEs and, and their various um, uh, the dashboards that we're able to produce and we will just give you a taste of what this is. Some of the dashboards are actually readily uh, developed in the, in, the, in, the, in the system, but some of the, some of the reports can actually be uh, designed specifically by our partners. And we have published, uh, we've referred to the beta report that we've published, which is on our website. I invite you to go and have a look at it. Um, and since we published this, this report in June, uh, the beta um, um, had uh, just over 708, uh, just 708 SMEs uh, data points. We have now been able to grow that to uh, um, just over 3,000. We have now over 30 BDS pro partners, BDS providers who are partners with us on the programs of the six large corporates and many other smaller ones and, and others that are joining uh, the, the platform. And the value of the platform is, is basically about comparisons, about benchmarking and about uh, uh, making sure that we understand and we learn and we make sure that everyone who is in the ecosystem uses the data to make decisions. So it's evidence and based decision making. So in summary, that is it. But I invite us to go to you to go to our website and have a look at it. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Sophie. So we will have the links to the websites and email addresses and so on at the end of the webinar. So hang on for that. Uh, really useful tool if you are in the business of comparing benchmarking impact of programs and that's why it's to getting the take up i would say as if you saw with the corporates that are supporting you um so that they can see how the business service providers that they're using are shaping up in the programs and they make proper decisions then in the end so that's one very high level of decision making and planning that's happening another more uh, down to earth level of planning is in the running of a business and here we've got Emil Fouri who's uh, the owner and manager of uh, Y Waste. Uh, waste um, well Emil you can you can at some other point tell us more about that. But um, Emil is the is the is the manager of that business and he uses the tool called the Flow Canvas. So Emil what is the Flow Canvas about? Hi Christoph, hi everyone on the panel and um, hi all the listeners. Um, so I was introduced to the Flow Canvas on a business accelerator and a lot of people at the time would prepare big exorbitant business plans and in a rapidly growing business, you find three months to six months later, all the plans that you had in place don't seem to fit. So that led to me using obviously one bigger plan for a 10 year period, five to 10 year period that I sort of progressed towards. but. At the same time, I needed something quick, easy, adaptable, um, and that I could just look at and was sort of on one page to explain where I was. And at the same time, gave me an opportunity to measure progress. And the flow canvas really seemed to fit that profile perfectly. Um, so in a nutshell, it's a one page plan. Um, there are online formats where you could use it and, 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 and fill it in and, and, and process it um, you know, on the online platform, but it's also as, as simple as taking an A4 piece of paper, drawing up the little grids, filling in the information and, and following, following the processes. Um, so the way the plan works is you'd start off with, with five simple questions. Um, you'd want to know um, what the services that you're trying to, um, to offer. Um, you'd like to know when you would like to, um, obviously offer that service, to who that service would be offered, how you'd like to offer that service, 
And then the main reason at the end of the day is why are you offering the service? Why do you think it is adding value? Um, so what you want to try and do is, you know, what you're trying to do is obviously create your products and your services to your clientele. You know, who's going to benefit from this? Why are they going to benefit from this? When would you be able to provide in the service? Um, and then again, in your organization, how would that service uh, come across through to, to your clients and also your team? Um, going on a little bit further with the, with the point, with, with this canvas, um, I just want to run you through the last nine points of, of, of how you would fill out this grid. So as you can see, the, a piece of paper would be split up into nine quadrants. Um, your, prim, your primary focus would obviously be your first five questions where you would start asking, which I pointed out previously. But then you would also now try and look at um, how do you engage between these, these quadrants and, and where do you get your flow from? So at the top of the screen, you see improvement, focus, and attention. That would be your, your what questions. Um, at the bottom, you know, your transactions, your desire, your deliveries, those would be the things of the, as, as to where your when would fit in. Um, your who is obviously now attracting your audience and, and, and finding out who that audience is and how you're going to sort of interact and engage with them and, and ensure that they are um, being provided the messages and, and information that you'd like them to know. And the how, again, is obviously now what you would want to tap into um, to getting to your business to actually delivering that service. And the, my favorite quadrant is actually the top left one which is improvement. So what you would generally do is you would set measurement tools throughout this, um, this, this um, visual. And at the improvement stage, you'd want to go back on a regular basis and just try and measure your performances at each point. So you would set matrices at each little intersection and then you'd be able to actually measure that improvement uh, with your team, with your, with your um, clients, for example, um, and it would give you a bit of perspective as to your progress. So I hope there's a bit more time, but I'd just like to run you through an initial scenario. Uh, Chris, if you could just go back one slide. So under purpose, so I run a, one of the companies that I have is a recycling drop-off facility uh, for residential waste. So I'm gonna just run through very quickly um, how I would use this tool. So under purpose, our main purpose as an organization would be to create employment through recycling. Um, I'd then move up to the focus, and our focus of here is be household recycling drop-off facility, which is um, what we'd like to offer. Um, we then move down below, uh, which would be um, exact mirror of, of what we're trying to offer, and there our transactions would be a management fee that we would offer clients. Um, our, another transaction would be obviously the buybacks we would get from um, selling of the materials to secondary markets. Our audience would be specifically household recycler, um, recyclers um, who aren't currently being serviced by pickups or by the municipality and that would want to recycle. Um, how we would get attention is we'd be local, we'd be visual, um, we'd have a presence in their neighborhood, we'd look at um, neighborhood uh, networks that they would have. The desire that we'd like to create is we'd like to make it feel that it's um, relatively cheap. Um, and very convenient. So on your way to work, you can drop off your recycling. Um, the delivery, you know, we are very close location. So that would also make it very easy for them to use. Um, the culture, we'd like to have transparency with the waste. We'd like our staff members and our team to be passionate and knowledgeable and also capable at providing the service that people would want. And then the improvement would be, again, like I said, that, that continuous measurements. So we would then set targets for each area of expertise, um, and then we would measure it on a continuous basis. The benefits, I feel, as you can see, people are using it. Um, it's very visual. Um, it's adaptable to any size organization, team, or lifestyle scenario. Um, you could run a household budget with this tool, for crying out loud. Um, it's fast and effective. Um, and in closing, you know, there's some really cool slides on how to use it on YouTube. Um, and then as Christoph mentioned earlier, he would be sharing the links as to um, how you can find and use this tool. Thanks, Christoph. Great, great stuff. Uh, thank you very much, Emil. And uh, for there on the left, we can see Emil as part of a group of people that were using this tool too. 
Um, so moving on from um, uh, a flow canvas uh, to a balanced a scorecard, also a planning framework or a strategy framework um, that is used quite widely internationally. And Carl, um, if you can bring Carl into the picture. So um, some of you may know Carl as a director of Ibasa, especially in the Western Cape. He's the guy that's bringing us all together. Um, he's also been on uh, previous webinars with us here. Um, Carl, if we can bring you in, what is the balanced scorecard about and how can we as business advisors use it in our work? Hi, Christoph. Yes. Um, uh, the balanced scorecard naturally is, as, as you mentioned, this international tool that was developed uh, actually in the 1930s around they started some developments in corporate world um, but i think uh, what is important it is a, a useful tool also in smes i won't start off with with it i will start off with something like a business model canvas for modeling or even a flow canvas for modeling in a startup scene but when you establish and growing then the scorecard is is a, is a good tool, strategy tool. So it's a strategy execution or performance management tool that helps entrepreneurs to do three things. To clarify the strategy, so to make sure that they can communicate it uh, clearly and, and, and share it. Um, uh, to define and align and manage the actions. To make sure that all actions are aligned to achieve the strategy and also to monitor progress to what extent they are actually achieving uh, objectives or not. So um, the balanced scorecard process or, uh, has three elements to it, a strategy map um, and KPIs and action plan. We'll talk about the other two now, but we'll see the balanced scorecard is made out of four dimensions that is centered around the vision strategic pyramid that we used to know, um, which is uh, said that they try to move away from a budget controlled environment, which we all know. Uh, the first thing we do is draw up the budget and then we devise a plan to uh, implement the budget instead of uh, drawing up a strategy and then uh, express the strategy in numbers. So, so it's got the four dimensions, uh, the shelter, uh, the question that I ask is to succeed financially, how sh um, must I look to my shelters? And for my customer, naturally, how must I look to my customers to achieve my vision? So what is my value proposition? And then I have my internal processes on the right-hand side, which is at what processes must I excel to uh, satisfy my shelters and my customers, and then learning and growth, or what they call nowadays talent and technology, is to achieve the vision how, uh, you know, what, what ability must I have to improve? If we move to the next slide, um, what is important in the scorecard is understanding the link between uh, cause and effect in strategy, uh, that relationship. So you'll see on that uh, uh, strategy map, the illustrated outcomes, the top two, in other words, shelter and customer, is the outcomes we want to achieve. So there we have growth and productivity and the value proposition for customers. But we know to achieve that, we actually have to do something and that's the activities and we need to have the right culture and skills and those are the drivers. So what is then important also is that for each of those dimensions, um, at least in the medium term, three years forward, we uh, formulate one objective and for that objective, how will we measure the, the achievement of it? What is the specific target? In other words, the required rate of performance and what initiatives are we going to uh, use to get there? If we move to the next slide, you'll see an example of a, a simple strategy map, a very um, a simple uh, exercise to show also the cause and effect relationship between the two. So. What, what, what the balance scorecard says is to get the bottom line, what we would call the bottom line the result, we actually need to start at the soft issues which we normally won't measure. Um, so to increase profitability, you can see I can lower cost and or I can increase revenue. 
um, and uh, I can then drill down to get to get to that. So here's an example just of if I want to achieve those objectives in three years, what do I need to do in the next 12 months? And here we then define the detail for each objective, the measure, the KPIs, the initiatives, due date. Now this implementation plan, action, uh, plan of action can be used for any tool. Um, it's just a good control sheet to make sure that you drill down your strategy through your budget and your budget is eventually based on your strategy. If I talk about the benefits of this tool, um, I think it's useful to be a uh, to guide clients through, and um, through strategy uh, uh, management or strategy formulation and mentoring the entrepreneur in implementing uh, the strategy. So it's very adaptable and visual. It's uh, like a visual GPS versus a paper map. You can easily update it. It's also a one page kind of thing. Balance between financial and non financial measures, I think, which is very important. And then understanding the cause and effect relationship in strategy to start to say, where do I want to be? So how do I get there um, in that process? And um, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of, of examples that one can use, but I think the links that we've also provided, you can go and read more on the background of this uh, balance scorecard, and at any time, if somebody wants to know more, I am more willing to uh, go a bit more in detail. This is a very high-level, quick overview. Yeah, no, Thanks, thank, you. thank you very uh, much uh, for that, Carl. Um, of course, uh, uh, five minutes is very short and it's just the introduction. So if we can move on from uh, that strategy, mapping the planning and setting out what we need to achieve, maybe we can learn from uh, Milton Tennyson about the growth wheel as a tool that can help us in also um, assessing where we are and planning how we can improve. So Milton, what is the growth wheel about? Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's awesome to have 72 people in the room and uh, uh, maybe, Christoph, we should get an idea of how many of them are females in the room. Uh, uh, when I started promoting and sharing information about the, the webinar, lots of people attacked me for the lack of females <laughs> in the, uh, the expert panel. Um, personally, I have three business advisors that are females out of the five. And, uh, and I, I think in our next webinar, we should have uh, some female participation. Um, back to Growth Wheel. So Growth Wheel is, was developed uh, several years ago, about a decade ago in, in Denmark uh, by a founder called uh, David Muddy. He first started like a, a business as a business as advisor, as, as all of us. And, and eventually the, the, the Danish government felt that the tool could be used as a language and a framework throughout its uh, entrepreneurship or enterprise ecosystem. And in 2008, we kind of pivoted to, to develop a tool for business advisors. And so Growth Will essentially is just a language that's used by business advisors to engage with their entrepreneurs on, on, on the many issues that would you know, that challenges every business. I think all of us woke up this morning thinking about our businesses and we have to make decisions and actions that aligns to our ambitions and the outcomes that we want to achieve. And essentially what we've done uh, with, with the Growth Field Tools um, is, is simply to make this visually available between the business advisor and the entrepreneur. Um, and so the core thing that we focus on is decision and actions and enabling an, uh, an advisor to kind of track the growth of his entrepreneur throughout that process. Now, Growth Wheel has a number of tools. Uh, we have the 360 screening, which essentially is an assessment to get everyone focused on, you know, what do we focus on this month uh, or for the week or for the quarter or for the year? Um, and then we have uh, frameworks. So the framework essentially is a high level, kind of what somebody said, an MBA type tool that allows us to delve in a particular conversation. So if you look at uh, you know, uh, establishing of a board, you know, what does a board do, what does it function, and, and those kind of things. And then we have a decision sheet. A decision sheet essentially is a, is a template or a checklist uh, that allows you, the business advisor, uh, or the business advisor and an entrepreneur, 
to delve in a particular topic. You know, I want to employ somebody this week, generally yeah, a salesperson. What is, what is the character of that salesperson look like? Uh, you know, what does his package look like and et cetera. And these are things that, that, that essentially the business advisor would give to the entrepreneur and kind of go, this is my point on it. Let please fill in you. Here's some homework and define, you know, what success or growth looks like in your business. Um, you know, when of, often when we have an ambition, we want an outcome. You know, and if you want to grow into another market, you have to make a decision. Uh, and then you have to take action. And those are the kind of things that, that helps a business grow. And so we track those decisions and actions over time. Um, if you can go back, uh, you're going too fast there. If you can go two slides back, just one more. There we go. Um, and then we have introduced something very new called a, a scorecard. And essentially, the scorecard allows you and your entrepreneur to kind of track the ambitions and the outcomes as they grow their business. Now, Growth Wheel is based is 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 a is a paper based tool, but it's also an online tool. So the resources that you see there, you can also use online. But we've taken it one step further uh, because over the last number of years, if you can move to the next slide, uh, Crystal. Um, Many of, our, uh, many of our business advisors in the 38 countries that we are active in, you know, we have 2,300 partners around the world. They said, well, we're in the age of digitization and over the last 18 months, we have developed Growth Wheel Online. And essentially, on the one side, you have a knowledge portal with all the tools that, that I've just shared, and you can also on, uh, upload your own tools. And then through the process, we've, we've developed what you know, many people would call a CRM, an ERP uh, with analytics, so you get data on demand and everything is kind of real time. And so all your actions that you have with your entrepreneur um, is recorded online. And if you have a number of business advisors that works with you, with a particular client, you can measure all those things that's happening between the entrepreneur and the many business advisors, support organizations around them. In South Africa, we, we started out in 2012 with Cecil Chem City. Uh, in 2013, we, uh, you know, the likes of Ferntech and, 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 and NG Mindset, et cetera, joined. In 2015, we incorporated Growth Wheel South Africa. Um, and, and since then, we've, we've, we've grown exponentially in the market. I think we have 120, 112 incubators in the country. And over 60% of them are using growth wheel. We well spread throughout the CEDA network, as well as some of the enterprise entrepreneur development practitioners. Uh, I will comment further about the upcoming courses and et cetera later. Thank you, Christopher. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Hilton. Um, and uh, there are the links and the emails to follow on through. You know, uh, five minutes is really a short for introduction, but that, that is what it is, you know, sort of for all of us to get a sense of where we're at and uh, what the kind of tools are that people are using. Of course, there are many more tools that we're not covering here today, and um, you know, sort of perhaps there's some tasks for us going into the future in uh, uh, getting a platform for Azibasa for exposing people to those um, tools. So next, uh, due diligence is, of course, quite a different kind of tool. Tyron um, uh, is running an accounting uh, franchise called Pezulu, and is also owner manager of due diligence, a tool, Tyron, that's aimed at a Slightly different market from what we've spoken about now, is it? No, not not really, Christoph. Um, what we found is that um, there's just such a lack of information around the SME space, and we actually built our tool to actually cater for that because the information gap is really what's holding everyone back: um, advisors, entrepreneurs, funders, and things like that. So, I'd if you just pop over to the first slide. I'm looking, I think I'm probably the only one who actually followed your brief of four slides. <laughs> okay, so this is where, you, where we're based. And this is what we're finding is that you've got corporates and funders on the one end running ED programs and looking to run um, fund entrepreneurs. And on the other side, you have the, obviously the, like the actual entrepreneur. What happens in that space is pretty much anyone's guess at this moment in time. So our tool seeks to actually solve, solve this issue. It's completely online, it's very simple, 
and it was originally built with the Fahandas in mind because obviously those are the guys we'd like to get, get our money from. Um, and as entrepreneurs, we always felt that's the hardest thing to actually do is to get funding. So <clears throat> we're removing inefficiencies out of the system. We're actually taking risk out of, out of the knowledge of entrepreneurs. A lot of people think this whole 8 out of 10 entrepreneur uh, failure rate our actual numbers show it's not true. It's a little bit lower than that. We're probably coming in around six and a half out of 10 are failing. And this is probably because of bubbleheader information available to the actual entrepreneurs and the funders so they can step in earlier. Um, resource allocation. What type of funding is actually needed? Do you need startup funding? Do you need uh, capital funding? What type of stuff? And we're finding that there's a whole mismatch of funding in the actual marketplace. And then obviously opportunities. So, this is where we've moved on. So now, how do we solve this? People use our online tool, corporates, uh, investors, they get information about the entrepreneur. They can see the information, they can analyze it, they can chat with the entrepreneurs about it. So if we go from there, entrepreneurs themselves can use the tool on their own with their coaches, uh, prepare the information. They can then like, like, and reduce uncertainty in their products. Um, get themselves ready for market. So when we, as I said earlier, when we built this, we initially focused on the actual funder and trying to shorten the funding cycle from meeting the entrepreneur to actually funding the actual entrepreneur. So the tool saved about 20 hours of meeting time. So you brought a funder like into the table within about, oh, we say, you know, probably about three meetings as opposed to about 10 on average. So all the information is in one place. So with, when we started that, that was the goal in mind, but what actually ended up happening was that entrepreneurs started to use the tool to improve themselves before they actually met a funder. EDSD programs started to actually utilize the tool now to improve the, the actual SMEs that they had on their program, to improve their programs, and also then to validate to their actual funders how they're actually doing this and where they're going from there. And obviously funders, have always been using the tool. So just a prime example. So it's a web-based questionnaire. Uh, we have a startup and a scale-up version. Startup is essentially pre-Mohani ideation. Scale-up, obviously, post-Mohani, uh, you're looking to grow, accelerate yourself. We give a very, very comprehensive GitHub analysis on the actual uh, client. What sets us apart from pretty much any tool in the market is that besides you measuring and yourself, you can also see how you fare against your peers. And that's quite, quite key because you might think, well, you, you're really awful in one area, but in fact, you're way, way, way stronger, you know, like in, um, other areas. We also issue key action items. So now funders, entrepreneurs, uh, coaches can use these items to improve the actual entrepreneur. Funders use it to write it into the term sheets that that's where the funding should actually go. And then obviously we have an indicative valuation on the product. So it gives you a nice idea what your business may be worth. And obviously this is just indicative because it's only worth as much as someone would pay for it. But what it does is you can run this, um, this questionnaire as many times as you like in the course of your one-year license. And as you improve in each of the fields that need, need improvement, so your valuation goes up. And this obviously points that you're doing something right, because obviously if your valuation is going down, clearly you're not going in, in the right way. And then the, the last slide there, good stuff. Um, the product, although we've titled it The Investor, this is used by uh, VC funds, ED programs, accelerators. What you do is you have a, uh, a corporate dashboard so you can see what all your entrepreneurs are doing, what their valuations are, what the growth has been, you have a due diligence checklist, have they loaded their data, what data is missing, what data may not apply. So it helps just to make sure everyone's on the right path. And then you can track your portfolio. And from there, sorry, I'm just killing my clock. Um, you have a data room, which you can then go forward from there. So very, very comprehensive. I mean, it's currently being used by pretty much every single acceleration program that's currently pitching at all these events in Cape Town. Um, so, yeah, quite, quite nice market adoption. Uh, very simple to use. To give you an idea how simple it is. Out of 900 entrepreneurs on the Excel Africa program that's just happened, we had four of them asking us how to do certain things. 
<clears throat> so it's multi-user, multi-company, multi-tenanted. So very, very easy to utilize. Thanks. Great stuff, uh, Tyron. We can hear that you are um, exposed to the pitching culture and setting your alarm clock for for reminding you to uh, that your time is up. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, like you have to actually live the dream. Yeah. So I suppose lots of the you diligence users are in that space, and it's nice to hear that you're making progress there too. But we would have, perhaps we can move on more into the leadership space. Um, uh, you know, sort of uh, not. Uh, perhaps um, dissimilar um, in that it offers advantages, but perhaps with a different focus. So Luther, if you can uh, please um, explain to us what this SA excellence model is about and how that can help business advisors to get better at supporting their clients. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, the SA excellence model is a holistic view in essence, a framework for continuous improvement, which was specifically developed to address the needs and expectations within the African context. As can be viewed from the model, the model exists of 11 criteria that are used as guidelines on elements of organizations that can be used to consider what the organization does, how well it does it, and what is being done and how the organization is progressing towards an organizational gold st standard, also called excellence in the quality assurance field. The criteria are divided between enabler criteria on the left, amounting to 500 points, and, uh, to, uh, and the results criteria also equally 500. The essence of the model is giving you a clear picture and the relative value of the various components that makes up excellence organizations and giving you a relative score to both diagnose and at the same time give you inputs towards planning to prioritize in which criteria is uh, improvement the most viable and ha will have the best results. Uh, second slide, Christoph. The beauty of it is that all the criterion is described. So you speak a common language. I've just used one. Criterion one, leadership, which counts to about 10% of the points, 100, 100 points in total out of 1,000. The de definition, how the behavior and actions of the council, board, executive management team, and all other leaders inspire, support, and promote a culture of performance, excellence, and good uh, governance and it gives you the areas. In essence, it's a self-assessment. So you can see this is what's done under leadership. How well are you doing? And the relative score is added. Uh, next slide, please. The basic uh, premise of the SA Excellence mo Model is the four criteria in enabling is achieved through leadership driving the five elements of the enablers ultimately leading to excellence in organization results. Final slide, Christoph. The beauty of it, it gives you a relative score in which you can compare yourself locally and internationally. And if there's some benchmarks they've done in Australia, some research, just showing the indication between your score and your relative improvement or return on investment. And there seems to be quite a linear comparison. They've also found if you 300 or below, your company will not be in business in three years time. If you 500 and above, you are best in kind in South Africa. 700 plus, you're world class. That gives you an overall view and the beauty of the model, you can do the self-assessment, do your planning and then repeat the measurement in a year's time to see what growth has taken place. Thank you, Christoph. Sorry, I was not, I was muted there. So um, Luther, congratulations. You've done the best of us all in sticking to the time allocation. Um, just by the way, um, in the use of this, what, what is the main benefit that the 
um, entrepreneur gets when you use it with them? Uh, firstly, it's the, uh, the, uh, the, it's relatively simple, well documented, and you can do the assessment yourself. Secondly, mm. once then you can uh, obtain a score for the relative 11 criteria, you can see where is the direst need for improvement. Oops, it looks, looks like uh, Luther went quiet there. In any case, it is time to move on to Roger. Roger Aronson is a coach, more than a business advisor, I would say. Roger, would that be a fair? Um, yeah, that's very fair. Describing very fair. You? Thanks. Um, so, Roger, here's something about a uh, reflective uh, a tool to help you reflect, come out with better options than you would have imagined beforehand, isn't it? Or is theory you not about that? Well, really, you know, as I hope to explain and give a high-level view overview of it, uh, it's really a process that enhances you to come up with creative possibilities um, rather than being stuck uh, in older paradigms of thinking and also of doing. Uh, and I think that's the true value of the methodology. Um, as an executive coach, I offer it to, to leaders and uh, uh, executives in business, um, you know, just as an alternative way for them to be uh, leaders uh, within their own companies or organizations, but also just uh, to apply even if you're an entrepreneur in business. I would classify myself more as a so social entrepreneur, and I find the tool of Theory U very helpful because it actually takes you into the social entrepreneurial space where you look more at how, the bus how your business or your organizational uh, ventures can impact the real issues of society. And I think that's where the value of Theory U really comes in. So the first slide shows you, uh, if we can just go back to the first slide, it's, it's just the two main sources uh, where you can read far more uh, about Theory U if you're curious about it. Um, I'm gonna give just a high level overview. The first one, Theory U, was really a pioneering book uh, by author Otto Schwammer, who was a senior lecturer at the Massachusetts uh, Institute of uh, Technology in the USA, and he's the co-founder of the Pres Presencing Institute, which uh, where you can find a lot of information and tools to amplify and, uh, you know, sort of support the overview that I'm going to supply today. And then more recently, uh, he's written another quite uh, informative and, and, and uh, you know, uh, important book called Leading from the Emerging Future. Uh, from ego to ecosystem economies and it's very interesting in, in terms of its project and, and that is to move people away from the individualistic, uh, very narrow uh, focus uh, in terms of economic, economics to a more eco-sustainable uh, economics uh, and we all agree that that is a big challenge for our world right now. So what is really important about Theory U, I think, is that it Take seriously the adage by Einstein, who says, we cannot solve problems with the same kind of thinking that created them. So if you look at the second slide, Theory you asks us really to, to go deeper than the results that we want, or even deeper than the processes that we use. And it wants us to pause and to reflect uh, rather creatively on the deeper question which is from what source or inner space do our very thoughts and our actions come? Now, most of us will find it extremely difficult to answer that question ordinarily. Um, we uh, can't easily see what the source is from which we operate. And this is why Otto Schwammer refers to it as the blind spot of leadership. And what theory you tries to make possible is to illuminate uh, this blind spot of our leadership and to offer us a process to see things uh, and think, see things in the world in a particularly new ways and new and creative ways. So we are asked, uh, if we can just stay on that slide for a minute, we are asked to discover a revolutionary approach uh, to not only leadership, but also to learning. It starts always with the personal leadership aspect, but taken to scale, you can actually apply your personal leadership observations and learning uh, around this inner space uh, of your leadership and take it to scale into your business and your organizations and in fact into broader society as well. The third slide. So if you look at the diagram uh, before you, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you can see that it follows the direction of a U 
from the left to the right of your screen. And by moving through the new process, uh, both as individuals and as collectives, we are helped to consciously access the blind spot that, uh, of leadership that Shawarma actually highlights. Uh, and really what he wants us to do is to connect much deeper uh, and authentically with what he calls our true self, uh, with a capital S, uh, and with our true work or our true purpose. So if we have a business, uh, you know, the business is the one operational aspect of who we really are. So what is is it that our work, our inner purpose as human beings, as leaders are really all about? Uh, what really matters to us? Uh, what is the story of the future that we see? And how do we understand and contribute as participants in creating that better future? So it's really focused on, on, on a, an emerging future, uh, to use one title from his book. And if you look at the bottom uh, of the U, there's uh, the word presence in. It's a process that you follow from the left to the right. And presence in is really what uh, Otto Schwama has coined from the blending of two words, which is presence and sensing. And what he invites you to do is really to see, to sense, uh, to tune into and to act from the source of your highest future potential, whatever that may mean for you as an individual but also as a uh, business leader, as a team in your organizational space, or even for social systems. So if you look at the, uh, the you uh, before you, you'll see that it, it uh, just in summary, uh, as you move, you are invited to move from a reactive space to a space of more responding to the challenges that are facing you and as they emerge from this future uh, of possibilities. And in order to do this movement from the reactive space to the responding, you are invited to uh, observe the patterns of your existing thinking. So uh, what are the one uh, ways of thinking or doing that is limited, limiting you, um, obstructing the very best that you want to bring into being as a, as a business organizer or advisor or entrepreneur? How can you suspend some of the judgments that you have uh, the voices that often uh, say this is not possible, you know, it'll never work. And then to redirect your attention uh, by seeing with fresh eyes, opening up to what is emerging from the broader social economic field, and then, you know, letting go of those voices of cynicism, those voices of, of uh, fear even that uh, often come up for all of us as leaders, and then to open up to what is coming from this future on the right-hand side of the U. What is coming? What vision is calling us? What intention is, is offering us new possibilities? And, and what is it that we are called to prototype uh, in, the, in the business that we are about and opening up to a new possibility and a whole? So we are really moving from a closed space on the left hand side to a more open space. And if you look down the middle of the U, you'll see that we're moving also from, from an open mind, we, we want an open mind, we want an open heart. The open mind talks about opening up to curiosity. The open heart is really trying to open up and deepen our compassionate space for the communities around us and the various businesses that we wish to serve and the people. And then opening our wills, um, not being limited by fear, but opening up to courage and making the real connections that we want. So for me, the real benefit of this tool um, is really that it provides a, a very holistic and an integrated approach to, to leadership, but also to organizational change and uh, to transformation. And it really provides uh, several tools, in fact, uh, if we uh, go on to the Presence in Institute and find them, to move to aligning our attention, our present focus with our intention, and that is our future vision and purpose. So as leaders and organizations, if we find ourselves stuck uh, in our own narrow personal institutional thinking, how can we see with fresh eyes? How can we open up ourselves to new solutions and possibilities? And how can we listen to one another in deeper ways that moves just from the downloading old patterns to a more creative, empathic, and uh, generative li listening aspect that opens up far more possibilities than we may have dreamt of? And come up with new ideas, new solutions, uh, even within our own business space, but also for the broader society. Yes, uh, thanks, uh, Roger. Uh, perhaps that's for many that are more in the uh, business technical orientated space and advice and some new thoughts, but really powerful ones. And as, a, as, as we have our toolbox, I suppose that we need different tools for different uh, applications. So 
Um, I, I tend to think of my toolbox consisting of both these kind of tools where um, the outcome is perhaps a bit achieved a bit slower and some faster using tools where you kind of have to sort out some maybe in a financial context or something, something differently. So there are, by the way, we didn't cover any financial tools in our uh, webinar here today, but there are, there are several that we can use to help us with things like cash flow forecasting and uh, financial planning and so on too. Um, but there's a mouthful, you know, sort of, so thank you very much, Sofiso, Emil, Carl, Hilton, Tyron, Luther, and Roger. You guys really gave us a nice kind of quick uh, explanation of where we are in terms of the tools. I just want to remind webinar attendees that um, the EPI, the Entrepreneurial Planning Institute, wasn't set, in fact, set up to support uh, practitioners such as ourselves to be using tools, including these that we've covered here today, but um, also to be developing our own skill set so that when the tools are maybe not available, we are actually able to provide proper services to our clients. And if you go there to training.epr.org, um, you can register your interest if you are interested in um, attending any of these uh, training programs that we are running. Um, it uh, will explain itself there. So as I kind of expected, we ran over time a bit, um, but not to, not to fear. Um, we, can, uh, we can attend to a few quick areas of discussion. I don't see any questions posted by... Uh, attendees in the in the Q and A frame, I do see some things that have been addressed in the chat. So that's great that we've been able to participate in a discussion there on the side of the actual presentations too. But if you do have a burning question that you would like to ask, please do so. Um, open, click there on Q and Q A, and type in your question. Um, if we can't address it right now in the webinar, it is also a question that we can direct to the appropriate presenter and they can follow up with you later on. Um, but I would like the, the presenters, the seven presenters that we have, um, if uh, unfortunately I think we're going to have like time for one comment uh, per person before it is half past uh, 12 and we need to uh, conclude the webinar by then. Um, if you can uh, concentrate on one very short comment about um, what the real benefits are that you can see business advisors can gain and um, if there are any tips in terms of decision making around the use of tools that could guide them. Um, Molefe is asking about costs. Now that we can't necessarily directly answer here, some of these tools are for free. Some of them you need to get a practitioner certificate to use and go on the training and pay for that. It varies. So um, I would advise uh, Molefe um, if you are interested that you in, in the tools that you are specifically looking at, that you wait till the end of the webinar. We'll share the link that you can get to um, co make connection with those uh, people to find out that information. So, um, but let's uh, let's go um, in reverse uh, sequence. You know, sort of. So, uh, Roger, um, if you consider what we've been discussing here, what kind of tips would you give business advisors in the use of tools? Well, you know, I, I think uh, often we want our, our tools to serve a particular external uh, operational need, either within, uh, uh, you know, within society and so on. And I think uh, what often we, we and, and we aim for the results because the results are absolutely important in terms of what we want to achieve. But I think what theory you offers you as a as a, uh, a tool is to just pause and, and to stand back and to say, so you know, I think very similar to the to the flow canvas. The little I know about it is that you go to your purpose and you say, so so what am I really about at the very core? Uh, often we, we want to serve a need and we we jump in very quickly. But if we pause and say, so where am I operating from as a as a business person, as a leadership advisor, business advisor? What is at the core of who I am about? Uh, what is important to me and and then to step into what is important for others and say can I create a synergy and I think that's where I think theory you offers offers us a several number of tools besides the ones I've just highlighted at a macro level uh, to say okay so can I use like say a sensing journey if I want to go and serve a particular community of need can I take a walk literally through the community and uh, understand who they are about uh, what what is it really that they struggle with at the core and then to come back and say, okay, now that I've had these thoughts before I went, what are the new learnings I can take 
on board and create a venture, a prototype. Uh, it may not be perfect and then take it into that community and say whether, you know, it can serve them in a better way. Or even take the existing models that we have and say, ah, you know, I've been using it in this way for so long. Can I actually use it in fresh ways? How, 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 what fresh possibilities may there be? And, and one of the ways we can do that is to actually go into the communities that you wish to touch with that model mm -hmm. and say, rather than what we think they need uh, or what we would like to offer them, what, what is it that we sense is emerging? And it may be from that potential possibilities, this future that Shwama talks about. Well, what is really coming to us that we haven't even taken time to reflect on? And okay. it takes time to just move away, you know, and, and no, open that. I start with re revisiting your purpose and connecting with the uh, local people that you are serving. Who are the people that you're adding quality? Yeah. And realigning your attention with your intention. So mm. uh, your focus with uh, exactly what you want to achieve. And there are tools like uh, the Ethereum U and so on that can help us. You mentioned Flow Canvas too, that's purpose based. Cool. Um, Luther, would you, would you concur with that? What can you add in terms of the leadership model? I think it's quite simple. At first, what do you want to improve or what you want to address? And there is appropriate tools for whatever you want to use. And then, next critical question is what can you afford to invest? That will make a very determining, of course, the uh, relative models vary, as you've mentioned, in their pricing. And then thirdly, how can you apply it yourself? Especially if you have a limited budget, what is the model that you can use and keep on using and starting to develop a culture within your organization? What resonates with you? I think those three questions will give you a kind of a clear indication in terms of what of the models you would guide or any other models in that case. Yeah. Great. That's quite pointed, you know, sort of, so what's appropriate for me and select those tools that are going to work for me and my clients. That's kind of good advice, I would say. So Tyron, uh, would you concur with that? Uh, tools and how your, your life uh, because you also you, you you're fortunate in a way because you've got a view of the clients that de we deal with from an accounting perspective too through Pezula's work yeah we're actually fortunate as you're right you say that um, being an entrepreneur and never having a job um, and now having this accounting franchise we've got a lot of insight into the actual entrepreneurs and their numbers and the only advice we've seen from that um, that mentors can really do is how can the tools you use make you a better mentor? Because, I mean, that's the whole idea is to service the actual entrepreneur network. And you can only ever do that if you're a much better mentor. Um, and don't be afraid. I've seen people commenting about do I specialize, don't I specialize. Specialize. You can't be a GP. GPs earn a lot less than, than specialists, even in the medical field. So, yeah, and improve yourself all the time. And all these tools have incredible value and they're all, they'll all um, cover an area over the life cycle of a business. So um, I don't think one of them are any better than the next. I think they could all be used by every single mentor, you know, to help you know, the various entrepreneurs at the various stages in the actual life, stuff, life, life cycle. Yeah, uh, yeah I, would, I would concur with that, you know, sort of especially selecting the, the, your game. You know what, what is your best game? and play that with the tools that are supporting you and playing that best game. I think that's, that's perhaps the message that I'll take from this, you know, sort of because there are a range. I mean, we only covered seven here, but there must be hundreds of different kinds of tools that are available to business advisors and mentors. Mm -hmm. So, um, Hilton, what, what would you say? Um, thanks, Tyron. Uh, Hilton, what would you say um, in, in tips to business advisors in taking things forward? Remember to unmute and switch your camera on. Good. So uh, I think we spoiled for choice as business advisors, which means that our, our ecosystem is in a good space. Um, and there's plenty of local and international tools. And, you know, business is the same all over the world. We want to help entrepreneurs grow their revenue, uh, increase their productivity, and, and et cetera. And, then, and, and, you know, the data is there that if, a business is connected to a business advisor. They grow 70% faster um, and they sustain themselves longer. What's critical for us in the ecosystem is transparency. 
if we have 3 million business advisors in South Africa, we are going to need 30,000, sorry, 3 million businesses, we are going to need 30,000 business advisors. And uh, organizations like IBASA, you know, SEED that's trying to uh, help with professionalization and regulation of the business advisory sector. It's truly, and, and of course, everyone that's participating today, um, it's truly a, a good time to be in this space. And for us as Growth Wheel, we contribute to this conversation. In many of the countries that we are working in, we are integrated at a, at a ministry level. So it's the language and the framework that's used by those particular governments that support you know, the guys that create jobs in those countries. And so I think critical for us in the country is to have a language and a framework that, can, that, that would allow us to kind of measure the impact and the stuff that we're doing. You know, we have just over 5,000, if not 10,000 enterprise supplier development practitioners aren't they really business advisors? And how do we bring them into this fold? And of course, you know, Joseph is very passionate about the standards that has been set by themselves and how they support and, and monitor their members. And I think this is critical for our ecosystem, is that if we're going to create 10 million jobs, organizations like Catalyst for Growth, uh, you know, and, and et cetera, uh, like all the tools that we have here, we've got to work together. There's no competition because we're going to have to create those jobs, right? Uh, what's critical, I think, for us in the sector as business advisors is transparency and to be more effective. IBASA has just over one and a half thousand members. And how do we get those members to do more and reach more organizations? Uh, you know, we've seen the business model canvas uh, almost be, you know, like it's everywhere. It's just a fantastic tool. Uh, but we know our entrepreneurs and our business owners in South Africa, uh, they need business advisors to help them get there. Um, and so, you know, the tools that we have in the country, really, I mean, I think we're blessed. No, I think you're right. You know, sort of, and um, if I, the people that I meet on a daily basis, um, including some of the people on the webinar here today, are innovative people that uh, analyze the challenges they face with their clients or the people they connect with and come up with solutions. That's why we can have a bunch of people all discussing these things in the room here today. And I promise you, if we had to include everyone that's out there, we would, uh, we would need 10 webinars to cover, uh, give five minutes to each of these tools. So, uh, so um, just, just one more point. I think it's critical for us as business advisors to adopt the digitization of the business advisory sector. I see that all over the world. I travel and I see all of that world. And like in the US where we are in 50 of, in all the states, big data and real-time data is, is what's going to help us. If we see the trends and the behavior of, of, of different business, ad, uh, business advisors as well as SMMEs, it's going to help us to make better decisions on, on what, how we should support the SMMEs in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So I'd like to hear what Sofiso says about that too just now. But before we get to him, uh, Carl and then Emil. So Carl, what is your take on this? Remember to unmute uh, then. I, uh, first off, yes, um, I, uh, I concur with what uh, was already said in terms of understanding what your purpose and your core uh, strengths are. And, and work from that as an individual and a company. Um, so I think all the tools and all the models, strategic matic models and planning models that sustained over time actually works from that principle. Um, so uh, I also see Mandisa ask a question here, uh, whether we as business advisors get to a point that we know the tools so well that we don't need to to use the tool and that often also the business owner already know the challenges. Now, from my experience is, um, I think also what uh, was referred to earlier, you know, the leadership by Raja, the leadership or the entrepreneur blind spot. Uh, often you actually exactly get to the point of the problem by the fact that the entrepreneur doesn't know. Um, and when you take him through all the uh, points that he should be knowing and should be managing, the things that he can't answer are actually often exactly where the problem is. So 
um, but experience is naturally uh, something that uh, helps you to less use a tick box approach and a more free flowing interactive discussion. Uh, absolutely, that's experience. Thanks. Yeah, no, I think, uh, that's a strong point. I think I would agree. Uh, so, Mandisa, you know, sort of uh, clearly, if someone gets more skilled in working uh, with business advisors, they need less tools. So, I always say I can do some home improvements because I've got power tools to use. Otherwise, I would not be able to. But maybe if I get better, I can leave the power tools behind and do a kind of a piece of art, you know, without any power tools as I get better. So, um, I suppose those two go together. So, uh, Emil and then Safiso. So, Emil, um, you know, sort of, uh, uh, by the way, Tyron is also an entrepreneur. I forgot that because he's running his own uh, franchise uh, business. Um, uh, Emil, as an as a operator there in the field, a, a receiver of a lot of business support services you are. So, so, so you use the Flow Canvas yourself. And um, how, how from the perspective of the beneficiary, the, the business advisor's client, would you see this choice of tools that, your service provider has? Um, so I, I think as I mentioned earlier, um, when you are in that growth and progress phase, you, you tend to be very occupied with your business. You tend to be spending a lot more time with your head down on the ground um, and changing a big plan and having obviously your bigger picture or your North Star in mind as a business um, administrator you can't always just take your foot off the pedal and pull back and do that, have that strategic adaptable. You can look at, measure yourself and then move forward. Um, I see my internet's unstable. I'm yeah, sure. no, you okay? We can hear you now. Okay. Um, I think if you're able to look back and, and, and measure your progress on a, on a continuous basis, with the fact that you can have an advisor next to you that is um, present, knows your business, understands where you're going, um, I think then it gives you a lot more opportunities to, to refine what you're doing. Um, and that is at the end of the day what you need to do to obviously grow and improve your operational activities. Um, specializing in, in the areas where you're weak um, being, and knowing what those areas are um, obviously then makes you a stronger candidate for growth, for investment, um, and improving your service offering to your clients at the end of the day. Yeah, and um, perhaps also, if I may kind of think out loud, uh, if that business advisor sits next to you and, and uh, walks the route with you, uh, the trust to um, put in the hands of the business advisor to select the right kind of support and the right kind of tools that's going to help you as opposed to what their personal preference may be or not? Yeah, 100%. So, um, you know, the, the business owner lives in his business um, and advises just having a little peek in every now and then. Um, I think if it's something that is standardized that both of you are comfortable working with um, and can share a lot more insight to the business holistically, um, it's obviously going to make for a smoother um, transition um, an engagement between yourself and, and your advisory board. Okay, cool. So um, we are fast running out of time, but um, Safiso, um, you kind of have an industry-wide perspective. Um, so I'll ask you to perhaps share from what you've viewed here today and heard here today from that perspective. Um, and then maybe we can close out with um, our CEO, Ibasa CEO, giving his perspective on this too. Um, I did promise that I'll share the tools, um, the links. And so let me do that quickly because we are on the hour now. Um, so um, there is a, 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 in fact, that tools.the-epi.org address will take you to a download of all the slides that we've shared here today. So if you missed out some detail, you'll be able to see it there too. Um, as well as these uh, web addresses, um, in fact, if you click on them, that may take you to a page within that uh, URL, you know, a specific page, which is on the PDF, and um, uh, the email addresses of the of the participants, the guests here today, are also on that um, file. So go to tools.the-epi.org, and that PDF will open for you to have all of that information. So I'll stop sharing that screen now, and get back to Sofiso, and then. Um, uh, 
uh, Jamti, I would like to hear your take on all of these things too by the end of the webinar. So, Zafisa, so what's what's the industry industry's perspective and that impact that we want the industry to make, uh, considering the discussion that we had about specific tools here today? Yes, thank you, thank you, gentlemen. I think very insightful. Um, I think um, um, sharing, I, I think, from the other uh, uh, core presenters and I think uh, one feels all the more positive about the dynamic work that is happening in the ecosystem. Um, we have an ecosystem that is very dynamic, well resourced, um, and I think many great things come out of the ecosystem. But my, my, my one perhaps parting shot would be to practitioners in the ecosystem is to um, also take a step back um, frequently and, and see what is working in our ecosystem and perhaps what could work better. We have an ecosystem that um, SME are, are placed as, as a national trophy. Everyone expects uh, SME development to answer the huge national challenges that we face in this economy. Uh, so we've got to ask some fundamental questions that will help us perhaps up our game and maybe do much better than we are. We've got to ask ourselves what really is working in the ecosystem and what isn't. It is estimated that we're spending over 20 billion rand. Um, I'm, I'm not talking about government money, I'm just talking about uh, money that is coming from, from, from corporates um, uh, under the ban of ESD that is directed at supporting small businesses along value chains. The question that I'm always interested in asking is how much of that money is actually reaching SMEs and what impact are we having? And I think that I think will we'll sober us up and realize that actually we may, uh, uh, you know, beat our chest and say we're doing great, we're doing great things, but I think we, we have much more room, 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 room to improve. And I think it is asking these questions of efficiency and cost effectiveness and actually impact ultimately so that we, we take responsibility because of practitioners in this economy and we should take the responsibility. What impact are we really having? And this is where we believe that it is important to have conversations amongst ourselves and really look at how we actually have a shared learning environment. How do you create a shared learning environment instead of working in our own individual silos? And that is where sharing data, analyzing this data, integrating this data, and learning from this data, and using this data as a key decision-making tool for all players in the ecosystem, whether it's a corporate that wants to fund a program, whether it is government that wants to pass a policy, whether it is a BDS provider that is saying, I want to design a program of this nature. And for, for me, I think maybe my parting shot is, is we need to actually look at how we support evidence-based decision-making in the ecosystem, not at individual, in our comfort zone, in our individual uh, uh, silo spaces where we are, but how do you prom prom uh, uh, combine the great work that individuals are doing, and, and, and we've had a good section of it in this ecosystem, and I think we've got a lot to do for ourselves, but we've got a lot to share with the rest of the world. So this is where we come in to say, can we share data, and can we uh, do analytics on this data, and I'm not saying data answers all questions and all problems, but I think it's an important input in decision making and influencing positive change in the ecosystem. And and that's basically my parting shot. Thank you. Uh, great stuff. That's a really important point. And uh, by, by the way, my uh, thank you very much, um, all seven um, uh, presenters here today. It was a difficult job to fit within five minutes presenting powerful tools. Uh, but it leads on to more discussions, and I do call on the 50-odd people that are still in attendance. I mean, we were about 70 in total at one point in time to uh, take up um, uh, the challenge of making connection with these people and see how you can perhaps take on board some of the tools that you heard about here today too. Um, my eye fell on Lesejo's name here as, as in the room too, and I, before, Jamti, if you would allow me, and Lesejo, if you are prepared to do that, quickly tell us about the um, International Conference for Business Advice offer that IBASA has so that uh, members and um, the 40-odd percent of people that are attending here today that are not IBASA members, that they're fully aware of what that offer is. I think it's a great offer. Um, if, you are, if you are ready to talk, Lesejo, I'm sorry to jump onto you like this. Uh, you must unmute. Remember to unmute. Thank you so much. Classic mistake. I left it on mute. I'd like to greet everybody who's in attendance to this webinar. Thank you for joining us. It's such a privilege. 
I'm on our side at Zibasa. We are excited. We are just counting down to the International Conference on Business Advising, where many stand. We are one of them. What we have on offer for our members is once you sign up as a member, not only do you get a discount from the price of 3,800 of 1,000 for being part of a professional body, EBASA has gone one step forward to say, sign up for this conference. And on top of it, we will subsidize and discount it further with 800 so that it's credited back to your account and you benefit for three days at quite a discounted offer. Do check out our website, it's there on the platform, the link that you can use will send you to the payment gateway and you must choose IBASA as the professional body so that we can get the feedback after the conference to discount it on your account. So that's us at the ICBA and that's you benefiting as a member with substantial discounts to participate in this amazing conference. So do come on board and find out more about what we are doing. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so did I get it right? You go to the Ibasa website? Okay. If you go to our website, you're going to follow the link that sends you to the event conference website that allows you to choose the option. There are two options. There's non-members, which is 3,800. And then there's those who are part of professional bodies. That's the fee of 2,800. You must choose the option 2,800 for a professional body, and you must choose us as Ibasa if you're an Ibasa member. Great stuff. Thank you for that. So we, um, if you have to run people, please do so, but I would like to hear what uh, Ibasa CEO has to say about the tools that we've been speaking about and the choices that these members has in or have in using such tools, um, also as a way of moving the industry forward. By the way, at the conference, there are various interesting happening at the con things happening at the conference. One of the things that we are reporting on is the survey that the EPI in the Barca did on uh, the, the learning and training needs of uh, practitioners, of business advisors. Um, so there will be a paper delivered. In fact, I'm working on that. I'm preparing for that right now. Um, so very interesting stuff that we find in terms of what business advisors say the learning needs are that they have. So if I could pass over to you, JMT, um, if you can give us a, a last word so that we conclude the webinar. Yeah, if I can just re repeat uh, the words of, our, of my colleagues who presented at Hilton and uh, Cifiso and uh, et al. Um, our members and even practitioners out there, professional business advisors, are indeed spoiled for, um, you know, with all these tools, they are spoiled for choice. With all these tools that are available for our members to use in assisting uh, businesses out there, especially SMMEs. And um, one other thing that I would like to say to those who are in attendance today, it's that I'm sure they agree with me with all the good tools that we received from the seven presenters. All of them, you find that you, you, you need them in various areas of your business as you are advising the client. So it will be uh, to the advantage of this profession as well to consolidate not only the tools, but even the support that is given uh, to SMMEs, which currently it's, uh, it's not coordinated. So this is going to help. I think it's a good start for us as Ibasa to coordinate and integrate, so agree with uh, services CETA who are very much committed to make sure that there is going to be a universal tool, a center where all data from all these professional bodies. So it is uh, in the interest of all of us to work together, as it was said, that there isn't any good reason for us to work in silos. We should work together in this industry. I believe there's enough, uh, there's enough dollars in the industry to cater for all of us if we can work together and even 
uplift and support others who are battling in the industry. And I want to thank uh, our seven presenters on behalf of Ibasa, our chairman, and Educations Committee, and even the committee that is uh, responsible for our marketing and various other committees of Ibasa. Thank you so much to EPI as well for partnering with us uh, in educating, you know, as, our, as one of our uh, stakeholders in the area of educating our members. And um, this is a CPD that our members should not take for granted, especially with the knowledge that we know that you have got your own tools out there that you are using. And some of you were not even aware that what you have is a tool. You just thought it's an advising kit or something, and you actually had a tool. When you see what they are presenting, you find that it resembles what you have been using and you didn't know, and maybe you have created that. And we need all that to be used by our business advisors to sustain them. And someone has said 40 to 50% of jobs that are created in the country come from SMEs. And if we are serious about that, they need support. And I'm glad to say that Services CETA has identified business advisory as a targeted approach. In other words, they're saying it must be supported, it must be capacitated, and it must be fully resourced for it to impact and help SMMEs to grow in the country and create the so much needed jobs that we need in the country. And I, can, I don't have ways to thank uh, all our participants, those who have... Um, um, who have left their businesses to come and spend this one and a half with, uh, hours with us. And all that we can say is thank you and we believe you have benefited. I have benefited a great deal. Thank you so much, uh, Chris and the team. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Joseph, um, indeed. So looking forward to see some of you at the conference, otherwise on our next webinar, which is the 5th of December. By the way, the registration page that you've visited at uh, webinar.the-epr.org has got a link to the registration of the webinar on the 5th. The topic is not final yet. So, in fact, if there's someone that wants to make a suggestion in terms of what we should cover in that webinar, it is most welcome. Uh, and um, we are at the moment, uh, have one or two topics that we are exploring, but it's not final yet. So you may register so long if you wish. Um, but otherwise, watch out for the promotions that we'll put out, the emails that we'll send, the Facebook page, and um, see you at the next webinar then. Thank you, everyone. Have a good week.